do 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 Oh, hello. Welcome to our cafe, the best cafe in the world. <laughs> We're just having a good tidy up today. I'm doing the kitchen and Ben's doing the cafe. Small, small, ho, 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 something awful's happened. What? What is it, Ben? Oh, hello, everyone. I've lost my gold ring. Oh, no. Oh, well, I tried it on this morning. I'm sure I did. But just now in the cafe, I looked at my hand and it was gone. Well, I'll help you look for it. I know how precious it is. Oh, yes, it's very precious. It was a birthday present from my granddad. Well, don't worry, Ben. We'll find it. Oh, but it's so tiny, small, and the cafe is so big. It could be anywhere. <coughs> oh, dear, and now we've got a customer. Well, don't worry, Ben. I'll go see who it is and you keep looking. I'm on my way! Whee! Who's in our cafe today, Small? Well, it's got black and white feathers, wings and a beak. Oh, so it's a bird. Oh, is it a penguin? <laughs> It's not a penguin, Ben. It's a bird called a magpie. A magpie? I heard you could bring good luck if you said, Good morning, Mr. Magpie. Where's your brother? Go on, Small, say it. OK, Ben. Good morning, Mr. Magpie. Where's your brother? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's not a Mr. Magpie. It's a Mrs. Magpie. And her name's Monica. I'm sure I've met Monica before. I think it's time to look in my book. We need a story to help us cook. Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's adventures in the big world. Let me see. One day I was having a walk in the woods when suddenly something landed on my head. It was a piece of silver cloth which glittered in the sunlight. Sorry, called a voice from above me. I looked up and saw Monica the magpie peeping down at me from her nest. I love collecting shiny things, but my nest is so full that bits and pieces keep falling out. I've got so much shiny stuff up here. I don't know what to do with it all. I think I can help you there, I said. I took Monica the magpie to meet a friend of mine whose name was Manjit. Manjit was supposed to be making a shiny picture to take to school, but she didn't have any shiny things. Monica the magpie was very interested. Well, if it's shiny stuff you're after, you're talking to the right bird, she called cheerfully. All afternoon, Monica flew backwards and forwards between her nest and Manjit's house. She brought Manjit shiny paper and ribbon, glittery material and sparkly sequins. Manjit was delighted! Whoopee! I know just what I'm going to make now, she said happily. And she made a beautiful collage of a shiny magpie sitting in her sparkly nest. Manjit and Monica the magpie were both very pleased with their day's work. Manjit was really proud of her picture, and Monica now had some room in her nest, so she could start collecting more shiny things. Way! Little Cook to the rescue once again! That was a great adventure. Oh, I loved the collage that Manjit made. Didn't it look fantastic? It was brilliant, wasn't it? Monica's collection of shiny things was just what she needed. Oh, small. I've just thought. My gold ring was really shiny. Perhaps Monica found it and took it back to her nest to add to her collection. She can't have Ben. You lost your ring before she came to the cafe, remember? Oh, yes, you're right, Small. Oh, I'll be so upset if I don't find it. It must be somewhere. Let's find a recipe for our hungry magpie, and when it's cooked, we can carry on with our search. OK, then. What can we cook for Monica? <laughs> No, Big Cook's Big Cookery Book. 
Of course, the big cookery book. There's recipes for everything in there. And where do we look for things to cook? In the book, in the book, in Big Cook's book. I don't suppose there's any shiny recipes, Ben. You suppose wrong, my little friend. Look, a fruity nest. The perfect recipe for our birdie customer. And even better, Small, you use shiny foil to make the nest. That's spot on perfect. Let's make it. Come on then, little cook. You read out the ingredients and I'll see if we've got them. OK, let's see. We're going to need honey. Honey? Over to the cupboard. Here we go. Honey, got that small. Lemon. In here. There we go. Got the lemon. A cooking apple. There we go. Nice big green cooking apple. Yep. Summer berries. Ooh. It says here we can use tinned, fresh or frozen. We're going to use fresh. There we go. And frozen yoghurt. Frozen yoghurt. Oh, there we go. Nice and cold. Yep. There we are. Everything we need for the recipe. Frozen yoghurt's really interesting, but I wonder how it's made. Hey, why don't you whiz off on a yoghurty mission and find out, and I'll get everything ready. That's a great idea. See you later. Hoo -hoo -hoo. Hey, why don't you come along too? Go small, go small, whiz away. I wonder what he'll see today. There's a train! Choo choo! This is the right place! This is where frozen yoghurt is made. First of all, we need some water. The next ingredient is cream. There are lots of ingredients used to make frozen yoghurt and they all have to be mixed up together. Mixy, mixy, mixy. This sugar adds a little sweetness to the frozen yoghurt. When the mixture has been heated up and cooled down, it goes through some pipes. Hee hee, here it comes! Gloop, gloop. <laughs> it's being collected in big tubs. Oh, it looks yummy! And it's really, really cold, but it's not frozen yet. To make it freeze, it has to be put in the freezer. It's really cold in there. On a hot day like this, frozen yoghurt is just what you need to cool down. These girls and boys look like they're really enjoying it. Mmm, yummy! That was great! See you later! Ah, right, everything's ready now. So while I wait for Small to get back, I think I'll have another look for that ring. Maybe it's down here. Way I'm back! And I found out all about frozen yoghurt. It's squeezed through a big pipe, and then it's put in the freezer. <laughs> ben, how's the search going for your ring? Not too well, I'm afraid. Still no luck finding it, then. We'll find it, I know we will. I hope you're right, Small. No time for worrying now, Ben. We've got work to do. Come on, then. Let's get cooking. We're all ready, so take a look. And we will show you how to cook. <music> Jelly boats and pirates go, princess pea pies. Carrot cakes and fruity smiles. And envelope surprise. We love our cafe and we love to cook. We have a fantastic recipe book. Big cook and he is small. Friends in our cafe, we cook for them all. When your tummy gets all rumbly, you're ready for a treat. 
You can make something delicious to eat. Have you cleaned the surfaces? Yes. Have you washed your hands? Yes. All, All clean, clean and, and ready, ready to, to cook. cook. Do you remember the ingredients for Fruity Nest? You do. There was honey. One tablespoon. Lemon. The juice of half. A cooking apple. One. Summer berries. Four tablespoons. And frozen yoghurt. Four tablespoons. Whoopee! Let's get started! Now the first thing we need to do is turn on the oven to 200 degrees Celsius, gas mark 6. And remember, this is a job for your grown-up helper to do because the oven is hot, hot, hot. Then put the berries and honey into a mixing bowl and use a fork to mix them and squeeze the fruit a bit. Now give them a good old mix-up. Then you add the four tablespoons of frozen yoghurt and mix it all up again. Hoo-hoo! Lovely and mushy. Pour the mixture into a container, then put it in the freezer for three hours. In it goes. All in. Pop on the lid. And over to the freezer. It's in the freezer now, Small. What's next? Have you washed the apple? Certainly have, Small. Now you need to take out the core and make sure the hole's big enough for the filling. OK. Here we go. And make sure you get your grown-up helper to do this bit for you. Then you need to brush the inside of the apple with lemon juice. And we'll need some silver cooking foil. I'll go and get that, Small. Brushing the middle of the apple with lemon juice stops it from going brown. There you go, Ben. Thanks, Small. Brushing on the lemon. After you've brushed the inside of the apple with lemon, cover it in foil. So we wrap the apple in the foil like this. Oh, ho, it's lovely and shiny. Then pop it onto a baking tray and then put it in the oven for 35 minutes. So, oven gloves on and over we go. There we go. And remember, this is a job for your grown up helper to do. In the oven it goes for 35 minutes until it's nice and soft, but not mushy. I'll set the timer to 35 minutes. Hey, Small, I've just remembered a rhyme. It's all about different numbers of magpies and what that's supposed to mean. Oh, let's hear it then, Ben. OK, it goes like this. One for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, four for a boy, five for silver, six for gold, seven for a secret never to be told. I think Monica will bring us good luck, and we'll find that ring of yours, Ben. <laughs> the apple is cooked, and the frozen mixture's ready too. OK, here we go. Out it comes. Close that. There we go. What's next, Small? You carefully open the foil and make a nest shape with it around the apple. OK. And remember, this is a job for your grown-up helper to do because the foil is hot, hot, hot. Opening it out and roll it up a little around the edge.
Then you put the apple and the foil nest onto a plate and put the yogurt and fruit mixture into the middle of the apple. OK, here we go. Onto the plate. And let's scoop in the yogurt. This looks tasty. A little more, I think. Last thing, if you have a few berries left, you can use them to decorate the top of the apple. And it just so happens we have. Ta-da! Sprinkle them on. There we go. One shiny fruity nest coming through. There. All done. So what do we do now? Can we play? Not yet. Time to clean and put away. Hooray! Wash, wipe, scrub and clean. Make the kitchen sparkle and gleam. My name's Ben. And my name's Small. We've got the cleanest kitchen of all. Tidy all the bits and bobs, the things that help us do our job. Ingredients we'll put away, ready for use another day. Pots and pans will start to smell, if we don't wash them really well. And now it's clear, let's all smile, we'll be finished in a little while. All around, up and down, we've got the cleanest cafe in town. Aha! Here comes the plate! Oh, yes! And it looks like Monica enjoyed her fruity nest. Look, Small, she's left a note. Well, what does it say? What does it say? <laughs> Let's see, shall we? It says, Dear Big Cook Ben and Little Cook Small, My apple was delicious! Thank you! And I love the shiny nest. Do you mind if I take it away with me? By the way, you know how good I am at spotting shiny things? Well, I spotted this under the table, so I'm going to give it to you as a thank you present. Love from Monica the Magpie. <laughs> I think I know what Monica's found. Do you? Oh, ha, ha, small! It's my ring. Monica's found my ring. <laughs> oh, I must have dropped it earlier when I was cleaning the cafe. Way! Oh, I'm so happy I could jump for joy. In fact. <laughs> I think I will. Whee! <laughs> I knew you'd find it, Ben. <laughs> See, See you soon. soon. Woo Big cook, little cook. We'll cook for everyone. Oh, hello, everyone. Welcome to our cafe, the best cafe in the world. Oh, I was just wondering what Small was doing. What are you doing, Small? Oh, hello everyone. I want to go and play on my scooter. Way! But it's in the cupboard and it's locked. And I can't open it without a key, can I? Oh, no, oh dear. I can't reach the keyhole. Ben, will you make sure my scooter's in there? No problem, Small. Right. Oh, yes, yeah, Small, it's definitely in there. Have you tried the key rack? No, I haven't, Ben. I can't reach the keyhole, so I definitely can't reach the key rack. Oh, let's have a look then, shall we? Four hooks for four keys. One, two, three, four. Well, there's definitely a key missing. Are you sure it's the key to the cupboard? What are the other keys for? Here we are. Right, here's the first key, Small. Thanks, Ben. Well, I know what key this is for. It's, it's the, the key, key to, to our, our cafe! cafe. <laughs> oh, and I know what this key's for. 
It's the key to the padlock on my bicycle chain. Oh yes, definitely the padlock key. And look at this one small. <laughs> it's so tiny, I can barely see it. There you go. Well, I know what this key's for. It's the key to my secret diary. <laughs> oh, let me see. I said secret diary, Ben. Well, never mind that small. We've lost a key. So the missing key must be the key to the cupboard. Oh, no. Look at the cracks in the floor. It's fallen through one of them. Now we'll never find the key and I'll never play on my scooter again. Well, we'll have to look for it later, Small. It sounds like we've got a customer. I'm on my way. Woohoo! Who's our customer today, Small? See if you can guess, Ben. He's got a long, pointy nose. A long, pointy nose? Oh, I know who that is. It's William the Woodpecker. Sorry, Ben. Good guess. But he doesn't have any wings. He has tiny little eyes and big paws for digging. <laughs> oh, I know. It's Marco the Mole. It is, Ben. You're right. But what would a mole like to eat? I think it's time to look in my book. We need a story to help us cook. Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's adventures in the big world. Let me see. I was out in the countryside one morning when I heard voices. But there was nobody around. Then I realised the voices were coming from under my feet. It was a family of moles and I could hear what they were saying. We're supposed to go to tea with Grandpa Mole. But there's a big dog who keeps sticking his head down our hole. It isn't safe to go out. When I looked around, I could see why they were so worried. A big dog was digging away nearby. Look! There he is now! said the moles. We're never going to get to Grandpa's. I knew I had to do something. So I picked up a stick and waved it at the dog. Here boy! Here boy! There's a good dog! I shouted. And when he saw the stick, he got all excited. Then I threw the stick as far away as I possibly could and the dog chased it way into the distance. The moles were so pleased. Why don't you come along to Grandpa's for tea with us? They said. So that's what I did and they told Grandpa all about our adventure. Little Cook to the rescue once again. That was a great adventure. Oh, you were brilliant, Small. You know me, Ben. Always ready to lend a helping hand. Well, I could do with a helping hand right now. What with? We need to think of something good to cook for Marco the Mole. Hmm. Oh! I know Big Cook's Big Cookery Book. Of course, the Big Cookery Book. There's recipes for everything in there. And where do we look for things to cook? In the book. In the book. In Big Cook's book. Well, pickle my onions. This is just the job. Which one is it, Ben? This one here. Mince pie moles. That sounds very moly. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly does. Come on, little cook. You read out the ingredients and I'll see if we've got them. OK, let's see. We're going to need flour. Flour in the cupboard. Here we go. Yep, got the flour small. Sweet mince meat. Oh, sweet mince meat. There we go. Got that. Raisins. Raisins here. Oh, I love raisins. Got those small. Butter or margarine. In the fridge. Here's the butter. Yep, got it. And water. OK, water. Yep, here we are. Got that from the tap. On it goes. Brilliant. Everything we need for the recipe. Hmm. Sweet mince meat. That sounds interesting, doesn't it, Small? Why don't you whiz off and find out how it's made, and I'll get everything ready. That's a great idea, Ben. See you later. 
<laughs> hey, why don't you come along too? Whoosh! Go small, go small, whiz away! I wonder what he'll see today. This is the right place. <laughs> All the apples are going for a swim. They're being washed. The apples have been peeled and had their cores taken out. Now they've been chopped into teeny tiny pieces. To make mincemeat, the apple pieces are mixed with all the other ingredients. They're sultanas. And up it goes. Whoosh! That's caramel. It adds flavour to the mincemeat. Ooh, it looks funny. <laughs> all brown and gooey. Here comes all the mincemeat. It's collected in a big vat. I like mince meat and mince pies. That was really good fun. See you later. Way! I'm back. Hello there, Small. What did you find out about the sweet mince meat? Sweet mince meat is made with apples, sultanas, and fruit peel. And it looks delicious! <laughs> oh, that sounds tasty. Come on then, Small, we better get cooking. We're all ready, so take a look. And we will show you how to cook. The jelly boats and pirates go, princess pea pies. Carrot cakes and fruit smiles. And envelope surprise. We love our cafe and we love to cook. We have a fantastic recipe book. He is big cook and he is small. Friends in our cafe, we cook for them all. When your tummy gets all rumbly, you're ready for a treat. You can make something delicious to eat. Have you cleaned the surfaces? Yes. Have you washed your hands? Yes. All, All clean, clean and, and ready to, to cook. cook. Do you remember the ingredients to mince pie moles? You do? There was flour. 225 grams. Sweet mince meat. Two tablespoons. Raisins. A handful. Butter. 100 grams cubed. And water. Three tablespoons. Whoopee! Let's get started! Now the first thing we're going to do is turn on the oven to 200 degrees Celsius, gas mark 6. And remember, this is a job for your grown-up helper to do because the oven is hot, hot, hot. So whilst the oven is heating up, we can start on the pastry. What was that? What was what? That noise! Noise? I didn't hear anything. <laughs> right. Sieve the flour into a bowl. Now this should get rid of all the lumps and bumps. Hey! There's that noise again! <laughs> Be careful, Ben! Sorry, Small! Hey, hey, hey! Right. Add the butter. And rub it together with your fingertips until it looks like breadcrumbs. Oh, it's a real mystery. Something strange is going on in here, and it needs the super brain of Inspector Small. <laughs> now, add the cold water. And stir it with a wooden spoon. Stir it all in. Round and round. And when it's all mixed in, we can use our hands to make it into a dough. Then 
then wrap it in cling film like this and then we can pop it in the fridge for half an hour there it is again You must be dreaming, Small. I can't hear a thing. Now grease a bunting with a little margarine. Can you do that for me, Small? I'd love to, Ben. This is so the pastry doesn't stick. Now I floured a board and I've got the pastry out of the fridge. So now we're going to roll it out with a rolling pin until it's nice and flat. I've finished greasing the tin, Ben, but I still haven't solved my mystery. Thanks, Small. Now, when the pastry's all rolled out, cut out six circles using a round cutter. Like this. And when they're all cut out, we're going to place them in the bun tin. is again. You must have heard that, Ben. Sorry. No, I didn't, Small. <laughs> now spoon a heap teaspoon of the lovely mincemeat into each pie to make the mole hole. There's one. Two. I'm sure I can hear something. Can you? <laughs> I've made some shapes out of the rest of the pastry. These are the paws, these are the noses, and these are the eyes. So now, let's pop them on the pies. On go the paws, just about there. Let's stick a nose on, and let's give him two eyes. One there, and another one there. And just to finish him off, I'm going to put a raisin on the end of his nose. There we go. <laughs> it's a little mole sticking out of a hole. <laughs> There's that scrabbling again. You must have heard it this time, Ben. Hey, I did hear something then. I'll just finish off the mole holes and then we'll listen together. There we go. A mole in every hole. <laughs> And now, we can pop them in the oven. So, oven gloves on, and over we go. There we are. Open up the oven and pop them inside. Now, they need to cook for 15 minutes. And remember, this is a job for your grown-up helper to do, because the oven is hot, hot, hot. I'll set the timer for... Fifteen minutes. The mince pies have cooked and cooled, so we'd better get them through to Marco. Good idea, Ben. Mince pie moles coming through. There. All done. Hey, that noise has stopped. So it has. Whatever it was, it's gone away. So what do we do now? Can we play? Not yet. Time to clean and put away. Hooray! <laughs> Wash, wipe, scrub and clean. Make the kitchen sparkle and gleam. My name's Ben. And my name's Small. We've got the cleanest kitchen of all. And pop. The things that help us do our job Ingredients well put away Ready for use another day Pots and pans will start to smell If we don't wash them really well And now it's clear, let's all smile We'll be finished in a little while All around, up and down We've got the cleanest cafe in town
Aha! Here comes the plate! Oh, yes, Maul! It looks like Marco enjoyed his mince pie moles. Look, he's left a note. Well, what does it say? What does it say? <laughs> Let's see, shall we? It says, Dear Big Cook Ben and Little Cook Small, What a delicious treat of mince pie moles. I heard you say you had lost your key to the cupboard. To say thank you, I had a little look around under the floorboards, and I found it for you. Moles are very good at finding things underground. From Marco the Mole. That's what the noise was. Marco the Mole was looking for our key. <laughs> and look, Small. The key, the key. Marco found the key. Oh, great. Now we can open the cupboard and get your scooter out. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. There it is. Yippee! Hoo-hoo! Here you are, Small. Now you can ride your scooter again. Thanks, Ben. Woohoo! And thank you, Marco the Mole. Woohoo! <laughs> See you soon. See you soon. Woohoo! Big cook, little cook. We'll cook for everyone. Hello. Welcome to our cafe, the best cafe in the world. Today is a very special day because I've been sent a present by my Auntie Betty. Now, where is it? Hey, can you see where it is? What, over here? It's not there. Where? What, over here? Oh, it's not there either. Oh, now, where can it be? <laughs> Fooled you! Oh, <laughs> very funny, Small. <laughs> Hello! Right, let's see what Auntie Betty sent. Open up the box. Here we are. Lift off the lid. Oh, look! Auntie Betty sent me a woolly jumper. <laughs> hey! It's made out of wool. And wool comes from sheep. <laughs> See it on, shall we? Oh, yes. It must have taken ages for Auntie Betty to knit that. Hoo-hoo! It's lovely. Hey, now where's a mirror so I can see it on? Um, oh, the cooker. Oh, that looks great on you, Ben. Oh, no, I can't see anything in there. Where's that mirror? <laughs> It was here somewhere. No, not in there. Where could it be, Small? Ben! Oh, Ben! I'm sure I've left it somewhere. What about round here? It's Auntie Betty's jumper. It's... 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 Hey, <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic, isn't it? Ooh, ooh. Oh, oh, no! Oh, dear, oh, it's all unravelling, Small. Oh, poor Auntie Betty. What am I going to do? Oh. Oh, we've got a customer, Small. You better go and see who it is, and I'll try and sort this jumper out. What am I going to tell Auntie Betty? I'm on my way! Woohoo! <laughs> Who's our customer, Small? I'll give you a clue. It's someone who's lost something. Well, lots of things, actually. Things that go... Bah! Hee hee! Sheep! Someone who's lost her sheep. And that person is Little Bo Peep. Really? Little Bo Peep's come to our cafe? Oh, yes! I bet she's hungry, though, Small. So what are we going to cook for Little Bo Peep who's lost her sheep? I think it's time to look at my book. <laughs> We need a story to help us cook. Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's adventures in the big world. Let me see. One day, Little Bo Peep was sitting alone knitting. Hello, Little Bo Peep, I said. What are you knitting? Oh, said Little Bo Peep sadly. I'm just missing. You see, 
I'm feeling very, very sad because I've lost all my sheep. Why don't we try calling your sheep? I said. Maybe they'll come back if you call them. Oh, I've tried that. <laughs> Sniffed little Bo Peep. Listen. Come back! Come back, sheep! Come back! Oh, it was the loudest shouting I had ever heard. It made me cover my ears. No wonder the sheep weren't coming back. Little Bo Peep, I said. I think I've got a better idea. Maybe your sheep don't like shouting, I said. Maybe they like singing. Oh, yes, said Little Bo Peep. And so I played the guitar. And Little Bo Peep sang along. Sheep, 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 sheep. It was an awful racket. I had another think. And then I said, Why don't we try this? Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep. She doesn't know where to find them. Sing them a song. They'll come along, wagging their tails behind them. And the sheep came back. They liked the song Little Bo Peep and I were singing so much that they were back in no time. Little Cook to the rescue once again. That was a great adventure. You're right, Small, but we still don't know what to make for Bo Peep to eat. Way! Time for some serious thinking, Ben. That's right. What does someone who's lost their sheep want for a tasty snack? Cook's Big Cookery Book! Of course, the Big Cookery Book does recipes for everything in there. And where do we look for things to cook? In the book, in the book, in Big Cook's Book. Yes, here it is. The very thing for Little Bo Peep. A potato sheep. We turn a potato into a sheep. What a clever idea. Come on then, Small. You read out the ingredients and I'll see if we've got them. OK, let's see. We're going to need olives. OK, in the cupboard. Here we are. Olives, got them small. A baking potato. Oh, in the fridge. One potato, got it. Cheese. Oh, yes, lovely cheese. Oh, and thick yoghurt. Yoghurt, yoghurt. Oh, don't seem to have any of that. Right. There we are. Everything we need for the recipe, apart from the yoghurt. Well, don't worry, Ben. I'll just whiz off and get some. Woohoo! Righto, and I'll get everything ready. Hey, why don't you come along too? Way! Go small, go small, whiz away! I wonder what he'll see today. Oh, what a lovely day! These sheep are in a hurry. What are they up to? The farmer is attaching some pipes to the sheep so they can be milked. That's the sheep's milk. Mmm, delicious. This milk is going to be used to make yoghurt. First of all, the milk has to be heated up and stirred in this machine. Then it has to be cooled down again. Before the yoghurt can be eaten, it has to be poured into pots and left in the fridge for a while. A pot of delicious yoghurt made from sheep's milk. Better get back to the cafe. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Way! I'm back! Did you get the yoghurt? 
I certainly did. <whistles> wow! Hoo -hoo. It was brilliant, Ben. I saw how sheep's yoghurt is made. And I even met a few sheep as well. <whistles> <laughs> Any sign of little Bo Peep sheep? Nope. Still lost. We'd better make her a tasty snack to cheer her up. <laughs> We're all ready, so take a look. And we will show you how to cook. <laughs> Jelly boats and pirates go, princess pea pies. Carrot cakes and fruity smiles. And envelope surprise. We love our cafe and we love to cook. We have a fantastic recipe book. Big cook and he is small. Friends in our cafe, we cook for them all. When your tummy gets all rumbly, you're ready for a treat. You can make something delicious to eat. Have you cleaned the surfaces? Yes. Have you washed your hands? Yes. All, all clean and ready, ready to, to cook. cook. Do you remember the ingredients to Bo Peep Sheep? You do? There were olives. Two, chopped up. A baking potato. One. Cheese. One cup, grated. And thick yoghurt. Three teaspoons. Whoopee! Let's get started! The first thing to do is put the potato onto a grease baking tray. There we are. And then I'm going to prick it with a fork. There we go. And again, turn it over, and one there, and another one there. This will help it to cook. And then let's put it in the oven. So, oven gloves on. Over we go. Just leave that there. Open the oven, and in it goes. Great. And I'm going to set the oven to 230 degrees Celsius Gas mark eight. And make sure you get your grown-up helper to do this bit for you because the oven is hot, hot, hot. Keep it in the oven for 45 minutes. I'll set the timer. There we go. 45. Ready. Take out the potato. Great! Let's turn it into a sheep. Not yet, Small. We've got to let it cool down first. Just enough so we can touch it with our fingers without getting burnt. OK, OK. We won't turn it into a sheep yet. We'll wait. Sheep? Wool? Oh, jumpers. What am I going to do about my jumper, Small? What am I going to tell Auntie Betty? Oh, dear. Oh, don't worry, Ben. We'll sort it out later. Has the potato cooled yet? Let's see. Yes, it has, Small. It's cool enough to touch. Hooray! Now let's turn it into a sheep. I've cut the potato in half. There we are. And I'm going to scoop out the fluffy potato. Nice and soft. Careful. Out it comes. Pop it into a bowl. There we are. Hee-hee! <laughs> it's fluffy, just like a fluffy sheep. <laughs> Yes, it is small. So, all the potato into the bowl. And I'm going to add some of the grated cheese. In it goes. A little bit more. There we go. I've put in most of it there. And finally, I'm going to add two teaspoons of the yoghurt. One. And two. And then mix it all up together. Ben, what happened to the rest of the potato? The brown crispy bits on the outside? The potato skins? They're here, Small. They're very important, those bits, aren't they, Ben? Yes, they are. Because I'm now going to spoon the fluffy, yogurty, cheesy mixture back into the potato skins. So, spoonful into this one. A little bit more. There we go. Fill it up. And then to do the other one. In it goes. Back in the skin. 
In you go. And I think one more little spoonful. Pop that there. And finally, I'm going to add the rest of the grated cheese. Sprinkle it over. Oh, yes, very nice. And now it's time to put it back in the oven for 15 minutes. Yes, it is small. So, oven gloves out. Pop the potatoes onto a baking tray. And take them back over to the oven. Here we are. Pop them there. And make sure you get your grown-up helper to do this bit for you, because remember, the oven is hot, hot, hot. I'll set the timer for 15 minutes. <laughs> 15 minutes, all done. And all lovely and golden. It doesn't look that much like a sheep, but that's what we do next. So... I'm going to pop this potato onto a plate. There we go. And now I'm going to take one more blob of yoghurt and pop it on. There we are. This is going to be the sheep's face. Remember the olives? Well, here's where you find out what we do with them. They're going to be used for the sheep's eyes. Hey, <laughs> one there and another one there. Let's give her some ears as well. There we go. Pop another one round here. And not to forget the sheep's legs. At the bottom. There we go, two there. And another two up the front. Oh, she looks great. Ha! <laughs> you mean, bah! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going to finish her off with a few sprigs of parsley. There. Let's get it off to little Bo Peep. One Bo Peep sheep coming through. There. All done. So what do we do now? Can we play? Not yet. Time to clean and put away. Hooray! Wash, wipe, scrub and clean Make the kitchen sparkle and gleam My name's Ben And my name's Small We've got the cleanest kitchen of all Tidy all the bits and bobs The things that help us do our job Ingredients we'll put away Ready for use another day Pots and pans will start to smell If we don't wash them really well And now it's clear, let's all smile We'll be finished in a little while All around, up and down We've got the cleanest cafe in town Aha, here comes the plate Oh, and it looks like Bo Peeps enjoyed her potato sheep and looks small. She's left a note. Well, what does it say? What does it say? Let's see, shall we? Oh, it says, Dear Big Cook Ben and Little Cook Small, Thank you for my Bo Peep sheep. It was delicious. <laughs> Here's two presents for you both to say thank you. Big Cook and Little Cook. Oh, what could it be? Oh, look small. It's another woolly jumper. And it's just like the one that Auntie Betty gave me. Now you won't have to tell her about what happened to the first one. Hooray! <laughs> oh. oh, and look small. There's something else in here for you. A little Bo Peep hat just for me. <laughs> here you go, small. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> what do you think? Hoo -hoo. Ha -ha. Oh, don't you mean? Bye. <laughs> See you soon. See you soon. Bye. 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 <laughs> Get ad free episodes on the Wiz app. Big Cook, Little Cook, welcome to our cafe. Big Cook, Little Cook, we'll cook forever.